whose because um, we've had some flowers walk off with the wrong owners. <laughs> so please be sure to check the, uh, the label. Also on the back table is our envelope fundraiser. And the fundraiser, you, you see an envelope back there and there's a number marked on it, so maybe there's the number 30. And you take an envelope, you put thir the amount that's on there, 30, you put 30 in the envelope, mark your name on it, and those proceeds will go to First Mile Giving. So thank you for that. We cannot do an offering today because of COVID. So we have set up for those of you who are, are new to worship um, in the time of COVID, there are plates in the back as you leave that you may place your offering in them. So we are grateful for your support. Are there other announcements? Praise God, we are here together. Let us begin.
Will you please rise? This day is like every other day. And yet this day is like no other day. So again and again we say, Please remain again and again and again. Please remain standing as we join together in the affirmation of faith. We know the fear of the upper room. We know the feeling of hard days and long nights. We know the grief of the tomb and the particular ache of saying goodbye. We know the pain of Good Friday, and we know the darkness before dawn. And still and still we believe. We believe that again and again the sun will rise. Again and again God will draw near. Again and again we will march toward justice. Again and again the tomb will be empty. Again and again, love will win. Again and again, God will lead the church. Again and again, and again and again, we will be loved. The journey will not be perfect. We will need to rise before dawn. We will need angels along the way. But again and again, the sun will rise. We believe. Amen. Now it's time for sharing our joys and our concerns. I want to welcome um, all of our musicians and singers and, and flautists for being here with us today. I also want to recognize uh, Mike and Muriel who came and cleaned and sprayed and, and did seating charts and listened to me complain. <laughs> <laughs> about seating charts, <laughs> and I am grateful for the work that they did. Other joys and concerns today. Was that a concern or a joy? Or both? There's a puppy in church today. Did you see the puppy? There's a puppy. Yeah, you have to see the puppy after church. He's very sweet. Who am I missing? Ruby, I'm sorry. I told you I was ignoring you, so I mean, I, I don't see you. I am so glad to see them. Nanny, did you bring cookies? No cookies. Nanny. I'm hurt. She posts food online all the time, and it's cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> Rich. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. No, 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 no. Other joys and concerns. Well, let's go to God in prayer.
today reminds us of just how much you love us. Sometimes we only see darkness. But God, you remind us that you control the sun and everything in it. Just when we surround ourselves with pain, you tell us that's not your story. You tell us that you are so much more. We give you thanks for the folks gathered here today, for the coming together of your people to praise your holy name. We pray for those who are still at home. We pray for those who are healing, for those who are in need of your care. We pray for those who don't know your name. So rise up, rise up in us. Let us feel your holy presence as we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Sorry, I really couldn't have picked a louder shoe today. <laughs> Today's scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath, Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Solomon bought spices so that they might go to and anoint him. And very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll you away, the stone for us, from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He, was ra he has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west. They sit, the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The word of God for the people of God. God. Will you pray with me? Let us hear your voice, O God. Let it speak loudly into our hearts and minds. Amen. When I was in fourth grade, I went to Jamonville. For those of you who don't know what Jamonville is, it is a Christian camp just outside of Uniontown and it has a big white cross uh, on the top of the mountain and uh, it's, it's an amazing place. So I went there, it was my first summer camp and uh, you, you all know that I am not an outdoors person, not a camper. And yet, people convinced my mom that camping would be good for me. Yay! And our camp counselor said, we are going to walk up to the cross and we are going to sleep outside. Yay. And we are going to watch the sunrise. And she said, how many of you have seen the sunrise? All right, well, I'm good. I'm, I'm all right. We hike up. We put down our sleeping bags. I don't like bugs. I don't like the thought of bugs. Thinking of bugs right now makes me want to roll in a fetal position and cry. And yet, there we, there we were. We were, we were sleeping, and we were going to get up at 5.30 in the morning when it was still dark. Now, folks, this was before cell phones and all that kind of good stuff, so we had to take one of those little wind-up alarm clocks with us, and there we were, sleeping on the ground, bugs, spiders, crawling all over us, raccoons, deer, other vermin, staring at us as, I, as we sleep, wondering which one of us is the weakest link. Okay, it's like loads of fun. But we're watching that sunrise. And so it woke us up, the alarm, and we got up and we got ready and, and we sang a few songs and, you know, we readied ourselves for the sunrise and suddenly 
the sun rose in all of its magnificent colors and splendor. This is the part of the story where you're ready for me to say, and even though I was like snarky about sleeping out, I saw the sun and I was transformed. Hannah, do you think that happened? No, it did not. It did not. I was still snarky and bitter. I may have said, ooh, ah. I might be that person. I haven't changed much. But the other children did enjoy it. I think about, uh, y'all can pray for me later, but you know. Um, in reading Mark, these women got up early and they were up at O Dark 30. The sun was not up, they were up. I, I think it's funny in this story that it is the women that got up, the women that followed the Jewish tradition, the women that came to take care of their teacher, their friend, to prepare his body as is the custom in the Jewish religion. And they walked to his grave and it was empty. Now, first of all, think about this. You're getting up that early in the morning, so you're already fussy. I don't care if you're a morning person. There's no one that is like, well, maybe Jacob. You're kind of a morning person, no? Well, you're brighter than me in the morning. But they get up, they're there, they walk into the Two minutes, it, 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 it's empty. And they don't know what to do. What are they supposed to do? On Easter, we celebrate that God raised Jesus from the dead. And we do this every single year. We know the litany. We know how it goes. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ the Lord is risen today. We know the words. We know how it goes. And maybe perhaps we take it for granted. You see, because every day the sun rises, every day, do we get up? Do we get up and see the sun rise? Because let's face it, folks, if we really, really think about it, we wanna smack fourth grade me because it is a miracle that the sun rises that another day is here. I looked up some sun statistics. So here's the mechanics of a sunrise. The Earth spinning at 1,000 miles per hour, traveling in orbit of 584 million miles around a star. That's about one million times the size of our planet. Think about that. That's like crazy, and it's a miracle. And every day, we ignore that miracle. We walk past it. How many people walk past the miracle that Jesus has risen? We celebrate it on Easter, but when it's done, it's done and it's gone. Let's look closer at the book of Mark. The book of Mark ends at a really weird place. 
Now, I know we don't have Bibles in our pews right now, but if you have the Bible app or if you go home and open your Bible, go to Mark chapter 16 and you will read one through eight, which we just read this morning. But it ends. It's really weird. It drops off. It's like, okay, we're done. Mark ends the chapter in silence. What? This is a miracle. What do you mean? It's like me seeing the sunrise going, ooh, ah. Mark does an ooh, ah. Now you'll say, but wait, Pastor Dawn, there's more. There's, there's like a little addendum at the end, and it says the shorter version. And then there's another addendum that says the longer version. But those were written later, like way later. Like somebody came back and said, oh, Mark, you messed up, dude. You like missed the story. Somebody's calling. Maybe call Mark to say you messed up. Because he did. There's just this weird addendum hanging there. Because Mark ends in silence. Now, if you think, well, maybe they didn't realize. Maybe Mark ended because he didn't realize what had really happened. 1 Corinthians 15. Y'all are going to be going home opening your Bibles, and if you don't, just lie to me and pretend. But in 1 Corinthians 15, which is written before the Gospel of Mark, and Mark is the first Gospel to be written, but 1 Corinthians 15 is written before the Gospel of Mark, and it talks about the resurrection. So we know that believers at that time knew that Jesus rose. We know that Jesus taught. So why? Why did Mark end in silence? What if Mark ended in silence? Because it was our job to continue the story, to tell people that the sun rose. He rose. It's our job because many of us will walk out of here today and we won't tell anybody the Easter story. We won't tell anybody the miracle. And maybe Mark was saying, listen, you know what happens. You know this story. You know the miracle. You tell it. It's not my job to tell it. It's your job because that's what God wanted you to do. God wanted you to be the voice of the resurrection, not Mark. Don't leave it to the gospel writers. It's up to you to say Jesus rose. He lives. It's now in your hands. Don't be silent. Shout it out tell the story. Amen. We will be having um, some music to prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. While the music is playing, I'm going to invite you to come up and receive, to take the elements and then we will receive them together. But I would ask that we do it a row at a time. So we're gonna go with this section first, then this section and so on. As we come forward, please allow this section to go, please be socially distant. And then this section go, please be socially distant. If you're able to, Grab for your, your row if you're related and together, together, so.
Let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive Holy Communion. The risen Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, who was there to wipe away your tears during the dark night of your soul, when the world protected all their sins upon your child. Who brought peace to your troubled heart as you watched with hushed breath as they beat and mocked your most beloved, who stilled your anger as soldiers stripped your child of his dignity and pierced his flesh with nail and spear. You never left your child. You never forsake your son. You were with him and he was with you. You could not turn your eyes away even in the face of his pain. So we join this day and every day we can with everyone we can throughout the earth to praise you every moment of every day, we desire to join with the hosts of heaven and join in their endless song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus ministered to those on the margins of society a friend to the friendless, a kind touch to the untouchable, always finding the significance in the insignificant. Jesus turned his face towards Jerusalem and fearless like a lamb that is silent as it is prepared for sacrifice. All Jesus wanted to do was love. So it is not surprising that Jesus would stun those gathered for Passover when he cared for them like a slave and washed their feet. New life comes through acts of love. All Jesus wanted to do was love. As they remembered the struggles of the oppressed, Jesus took the Passover bread with thanksgiving, saying, Take some bread, all of you, for this is my body given for you. New life comes through acts of love. All Jesus wanted to do was love as they remembered the high cost of sin. Jesus took the Passover cup with thanksgiving, saying, Drink some wine, all of you, for this is the cup of my blood poured out as a living witness to God's eternal covenant of forgiveness, a promise to you and to all who will believe. New life comes through acts of love. With all our hearts, we seek to proclaim with our love this mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Open tomb, open heart, surprise us with this bread and this cup. Allow them to be for us the resurrected Christ, his body and his blood. Open tomb, open heart, surprise the world with our lives. Allow us to become your church the active body and compassionate bride of Christ. Awaken your church to new possibilities of forgiveness and understanding. Amen. Will you please remove the bread that is at the bottom of the cup? For God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son. Take now and eat. Please remove the lid of the cup. This is the covenant of love shown to us through the sacrifice of Christ. Take now and drink. May we arise and praise God. Amen.
It is a miracle. Let us not be silent. Let us make sure that every day, every day, we remember and shout the miracle that Christ has risen. Let us not be silent. This is meant to be shouted from the rooftops. He's risen. Amen.